So we've gotten a number of questions about microphone techniques. As most of you who have been paying attention, um, <laughs> I hope you all have. <laughs> I, I'm sure, well, I'm the, I won't get into that. So for those of you that have been watching Octave, you know what our mission is. Our mission is to make the perfect recording, to capture instruments, voices as naturally and with as much three-dimensionality with no loss of dynamics as possible. Now, we're not here to make hit records, love to make a hit record, but that's not our mission. Our mission is to record everything in DSD. We do everything at 256 DSD, which is running at about 11.2 megahertz. And when we do a 32 channel recording, the poor computers, that's, you know, that's rough stuff. <laughs> but part of accomplishing our mission to make such great natural sounding recordings comes with a bit of a challenge to get the microphones placed correctly. And one of the ways we do that is by using, as I've talked about before, a stereo microphone or a stereo microphone configuration. Now, one of the most popular configurations for stereo microphones is called a Bloomline microphone. And this is the classic C24 by AKG, and it is a Bloomline setup. So what is a Bloomline? And, and who is a Bloomline? So Alan Bloomline was this genius inventor who worked on everything from bomb sites during World War II to inventing stereo. Uh, oh my gosh, if you look up on Wikipedia, go to Alan Bloomline. Th this character is, uh, a guy's a genius. I mean, he just invented everything that we use and we take for granted today. And one of the things he did, which is now called the Bloomline effect, is basically taking uh, two microphones and putting them uh, at angles like this, okay, and in a figure eight pattern. But, and, and inside of here, you can't really see, but there's a, a capsule going this way and a capsule going that way, okay? And each one, and this is kind of important, is in the um, figure eight uh, polar pattern. So here, I'll, I'll violate every cinematic rule around and show you. This is maybe, th these are the classic Neumanns, right? So these Neumanns can be uh, used in the same way. There's a little, if, if I can challenge the phone here, if I move quickly enough, you can probably see, see that little figure eight? I hope, I can't see what you're seeing. But if you can, that's how you set the polar pattern of a Neumann. There's a little switch over here, mechanical switch, all right? And that means that the pattern this microphone's picking up is like this and then like this. If it were a speaker, it would be called a bipole because these are all in phase, right? So a bipole speaker has speaker drivers on the front and speaker drivers in the rear, and it makes this figure eight pattern, okay? Now this is a little bit more extreme, but we're not gonna get into that. Okay, so the capsule is here, a flat capsule. It's a, a condenser capsule. And if we were to place these two microphones like this, we would have a bloom line. And what would happen here on this piano is this one captures everything from this direction and that direction. And this one captures everything here and here. And together they make one of the more natural sounding stereo images that you can achieve. Now there's other ways of doing it. You can, you can, you know, place them like, I think that's called the XY technique, but we very much like the bloom line technique, which is, if I can get over here through all these microphones, and it looks like that. Okay, so this setup that we have here is one of my favorite for recording the piano, and you can see that we have the microphone here. Now we're still working on placement. Generally what you want to do to place this microphone, you want to measure the length of the instrument. Like in this case, uh, in fact I don't remember, is it four, five feet? Um, whatever it is, you take that and have it 
and then from the center here all the way over here is where you generally set it. Now, that's the, the standard setup, but I prefer it a bit closer, and then we do it all by ear. We have somebody playing, I'll go in the control room and listen, and we'll move it and get it to where it just sounds real, where it sounds live, okay? Um, I also like to have a smidge of close proximity mics. So these are AKG uh, 414 cond uh, condenser mics, and they have adjustable polar patterns. And these are used right now as an omni, which means a complete circular pattern. They're spread apart. And they're fairly close over here to the strings, and that gives us a little bit of intimacy. And lastly, what we like to do is have some of the room. So behind us, you can see a pair, well, you can't actually, but let me do a cinematic faux pas. And you can see the DPA microphones here. So those DPA microphones are here to pick up the room sounds of the piano. So, okay, I will get back in front of the camera and say thanks. Thanks for watching, and I appreciate your support of Octave Records. Okay.